probably I am the only one here that who is not working on traditional Chinese medicine uh, directly, but uh, I have started to understand and to uh, follow traditional Chinese medicine since we started a, a program uh, uh, five years ago with the journal I am editor-in-chief of pharmacological research, which was to try to help traditional Chinese medicine towards uh, a Western perspective. So uh, my talk will be the, uh, see from the viewpoint of an editor of a journal that has never worked on TCM, but has experience, although indirectly, about TCM. And before I start getting into the point, I just want to make a brief statement about uh, what traditional Chinese medicine uh, is, uh, let's say, seen from the Western perspective. Now, in, up until the middle of the 19th century, uh, therapy in the Western countries was essentially based on the use of herbs. And there are two important uh, aspects of this kind of therapy. It was standardized and it was under the control of the local government, such that every single preparation of this kind of herbs, it was called theriaca, and it was containing 72 uh, herbs, uh, was made publicly, and the alphas were sealed before being sent to the drugstores. And the tradition has been maintained somehow, uh, even in the present days, uh, uh, for sure in Italy, but also in Germany and France, we have what we call the Fernet, which is a liquor made of, it's a simplified formula of theriaca. Uh, and my grandma was always saying, take a, a sip of it and it will be good for your health. So there is in the Western uh, mind in a positive attitude towards a kind of treatment, which is in, in terms of cultural framework, different from traditional Chinese medicine, but can be useful at the moment we want to bring traditional Chinese medicine and its value uh, toward a Western audience. Now, uh, from my perspective, I have seen several papers coming on traditional Chinese medicine and uh, what well, Professor Liu has already and Professor Effort have already uh, explained uh, well uh, the role of this uh, medicine into uh, the current pandemic, but um, and and I agree upon that, especially when traditional Chinese medicine is uh, uh, combined with conventional Western medicine. And I just bring here two examples, one from previous pandemic, the, the one from the first uh, coronavirus of SARS, and, and the second one we published recently on uh, this, the current epidemic. So the combination appears to be very effective. And, and that is for sure something people are starting to recognize across the world. Now, uh, what are the main problems uh, of traditional Chinese medicine towards the West. And uh, I hope by this to answer also a couple of questions I've seen coming in from the audience. Now, the first important issue uh, is an aspect of pharmacodynamic and pharmacogenetics. Uh, population across the world differ for several uh, genetic traits that are important for uh, the metabolism, for the disposition, for the bioavailability of drugs. These are just three examples. And we know that uh, there are some, especially when population are secluded, and for instance, Ethiopia is, is a, a clear case, uh, they, they develop specific ways of metabolizing drugs such that whenever you give a drug that has been studied in another country, let's say in Western countries, and you bring it to Ethiopia or to other country with a different way of metabolizing the drugs, you can get a different efficacy and a different toxicity. So that is important because uh, 
whenever we think about bringing traditional Chinese medicine towards the West, we have always to consider the point that some kind of clinical trials have to be done on Caucasian populations. The second issue I see for traditional Chinese medicine is uh, uh, how is, is the cultural framework, which is very different from ours. So it's not the name of the formula, it's not the composition that creates most of the problem, but is how the efficacy is classified. If you look on the, uh, on the slide on the, on the right hand side, you see that how, for instance, the uh, efficacy of this first formula, Qin Kiao San, hope I pronounce it correctly, in Chinese traditional medicine, says it disperses when heat, clears heat, and relieves toxicity, which broadly translated into a Western framework would be improvement of the function of the upper respiratory mucosal immune system. And the second one, tonifying key to protect from external pathogens. It means it's an antiviral, anti-inflammatory, and immunoregulatory uh, drug. You see, uh, this is clearly a, a difficulty that has to be somehow sorted out. 